pleasure once again to be with you, Gary Stearman, for Prophecy Watchers, with me, Avi Lipkin. And uh, I'm holding Avi's six books, which uh, we offer as the Avi Lipkin package for $59.95, right on this website. You can see how to order them. Uh, we're going to focus on this book, Return to Mecca. Uh, this, this is revolutionary, Avi. It really is. It has to do with a prophetic structure. Uh, which nobody else has seen. I think you did some remarkable original work. Uh, Return to Mecca, Mecca of course being in Saudi Arabia, deals with uh, some prophetic uh, scripture and it also deals with contemporary politics. And on the back of Avi's book, uh, I quote from Osama uh, bin Laden, this is really interesting. Thus, writes uh, Osama, thus Israel and behind it, America, killed all the children of the world. And who's to stop Israel from the murder of our sons tomorrow? In Tabuk, or in Jauf, or in the surrounding areas of Palestine. And what will the rulers do if Israel starts to expand its unfair, unjust, and false settlements, which the leaders do declare as such, beyond its currently known boundaries, and says our borders extend to Medina. So here is Osama bin Laden uh, looking at the world and saying, what's to stop Israel's leaders from moving southward into northern Saudi Arabia? Correct. What's the story behind that? Okay, uh, you know, I have to tell you, it must have been about uh, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, that Israel came out uh, with currency, with coins, uh, showing a menorah. Uh, now, today it's a little 10 agora coin, mm -hmm. but uh, years ago it was 100 shekels, you know, when, before they devalued by a thousand times. It was a big coin with a, a menorah, uh, which would have, had been etched onto a shard, you know, onto pottery. But the way the pottery piece looked, it looked like Israel and Saudi Arabia. Uh -huh. And so Yasser Arafat was saying, oh, you see, the Jews are going to take Saudi Arabia also. And I said, this Arafat's nuts. But this is deeply ingrained in the Arab thinking. That the Saudi Peninsula, the Arabian Peninsula, does belong to God's promise to Israel. Hmm. And God says in Deuteronomy 11, I'm going to extend your borders from Lebanon to Arabia, it doesn't say Arabia, it says the, the desert, and from the Mediterranean Sea to the Euphrates. And, you know, I, firstly I have to say that I owe a lot of thanks and a lot of inspiration to Jim and Penny Caldwell because they gave me that quote about uh, Osama. And um, they were in Arabia, they were at Jebel al Laws, which is Mount Sinai, the real Mount Sinai where the Ten Commandments were given. They risked their lives to climb that mountain. They found the cave where Elijah and of course the Apostle Paul also spent time talking yes. to God. And uh, Jim and Penny Caldwell said to me, you Jews, isn't the mountain of God important to you? How can you leave Jebel Allah's, Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, the mountain of God, in the hands of the Muslim infidels? And basically, my contention has now become in my yellow book that the Jews and the Christians need to liberate Mount Sinai from Islam, from Saudi Arabia. Now, what Osama says in the quote on the back of my book, he talks about Jauf and Tabuk. Jauf and Tabuk are only 100, 200 miles from Eilat, from the, the, the south, southern tip of Israel. And I'm thinking to myself, what are the conditions, what is the scenario for Israel to end up having to go southward and to occupy parts of Saudi Arabia? What's going to lead up to it? Uh, does Israel want to do it? The answer is no. Israel has absolutely no interest in taking anything from Saudi Arabia. Um, but I feel that the, a series of uh, uh, incidents that are going to take place will eventually lead to a vacuum that will suck into Israel into northern Saudi Arabia. And on a previous get-together, uh, Avi described in depth uh, a, 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 a tribe that has recently taken Yemen and, and reset, if you will, the political uh, map in the Middle East, which could focus interest in this very area. It's not just the Houthis. The Houthis are a proxy of Iran. 
Iran is backing the Houthis with weapons, with soldiers. The Iranian Navy is constantly patrolling the Red Sea and around uh, uh, the Arabian Peninsula. And, you know, you ask yourself, what does Iran, why does Iran show so much interest in this area? And the reason is because Mecca is right there, uh, very close to the, to, to the um, coast there. Um, whoever wins Mecca wins in the Islamic war between the Shiites and the Sunnis. And so I think we are coming to very soon to a very big showdown. I think the Houthis and the Iranians will invade Saudi from the south and from the east. And uh, the Saudis will basically ask for help from Egypt, maybe from Israel also. But I know that ISIS will come in from the north. And we should restate that the Saudis are uh, Sunni Muslims, whereas uh, those people from Iran are hard and fast Shiites. Shiites. And this is an unforgiving war, a hateful war between Sunnis and Shiites. Uh, you know, I know Catholics and Protestants have 300 years of wars of reformation, but praise God those wars are over. You don't see Catholics and uh, Protestants killing each other, maybe except on the soccer field in Belfast in Northern Ireland. But uh, this is a serious war, 1,400 years between Shiites and Sunnis, and it will only end when one side or the other takes Mecca, or if Mecca is destroyed by either of them, or both. Obviously, probably a lot of people uh, listening to us right now don't know that the wilderness march through the desert, uh, the, the 40 years, or actually it was 38, uh, it, that desert was actually Saudi Arabia. Correct. And I think the simplest proof from the whole Bible, there are many proofs, they're in this yellow book, but the simplest proof is Deuteronomy 2 verse 2. Deuteronomy 2 verse 2, God says to the Israelites, enough being encompassed on this mountain, meaning Mount Sinai, Mount Horev, mm -hmm. turn north and head to the land of the Amorites, the land that I promised you. Uh, so we, if we have to turn north, we were, we were south. Yeah. And uh, contrary to what certain rabbis say, I do believe that the uh, Torah is a GPS. There are proofs there. Uh, also, the t tent of the meeting, it says these beams of the tent will face north, these beams will face east. The ones on the right-hand side face Yemen, which is to the right, to the south, yeah. and the beams behind us face the sea, the Red Sea. Wow. So, um, also the Coldwells came up with a very interesting theory, which I have adopted also, that the real name, Yam Suf, is not Yam Suf, it's Yam Sof. Yam Sof means the end. The sea, which represents the end of this tremendous peninsula of Arabia. Because so wherever you go, it's Yam Sof. It's, 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 Yom the Sof. sea is the end of the, that land. Mm -hmm. uh, Suf, many people have uh, uh, understood it to mean the reeds. And then the reed sea became the red sea. But this is not a sea of reeds. I, and so they came up with a theory. They, many things that Jim and Penny call, call say are totally plausible, and uh, they fit also with what I'm saying. So, you know, I love them very much. And here's a, a, a classic example of Jews and Christians working together the same ide ideological bent. And that land where yeah. they walked, that desert wilderness where they walked, uh, the, the Lord said, every place your foot shall, shall tread, it will be yours. It will be yours. And uh, I always say like this, the cold walls are the right hand, I'm the left hand, the Jewish hand and the Christian hand clapping together. And the final victory over Islam is very close.